Hello, and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to be talking about, the, uh, we will get to this, uh, but primarily, the Spamcaster 1-800. Are you tired of being out in the middle of nowhere with no cell service and finding yourself unable to snap a quick middle finger pick in ATAC and send it to your buddies? Are you running out of space on your over-encumbered plate carrier setup and uh, can't find a spot to mount your IP mesh radio? Are you tired of products that are overpriced, weigh a ton, and don't perform as expected? Well, you're going to be disappointed about that last one still, but for the other two, the Spamcaster 1-800 can help. For only 27 payments of 19... I'm, uh, I'm just kidding. It's going to be free. Um, all the files are going to be posted. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, ignore that part. I ran out of heat set inserts when I was building this thing. I didn't realize I was almost out. Also, it just uses a mad number of screws. But, um, so what is this thing? So I saw that Streamcaster had made this cool device. It combined a an EUD mounting bracket, uh, just kind of like this one, uh, and a mesh radio. And I thought that was really cool. I want to go LARPing with that. But then at the bottom of the page, there's a little asterisk, and it said it was available to government and militaries. I will just not stand for that. I, uh, I could not only not afford it, I don't know how much it costs, but I can't afford it. And also, they wouldn't even sell it to me if I wanted. So uh, I made... The Spamcaster 1-800. Uh, so this is a, a fancy 3D printed enclosure. There's a spot where you can mount your phone, as you can see there. And internally, there is a gl.inet, gl-axt1800 mobile wireless router. That's a mouthful. I'm never saying that again. I'm just going to refer to it as the axt1800. Um, so it's a uh, it's an enclosure. It contains the AXT eighteen hundred, and it's a spot to mount your phone, uh, and that that is it. <laughs> um, so you're probably saying, okay, that's retarded, and it is, but 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 it's also not retarded. It's it's a great way to save space. So it combines the mesh radio and the phone into a single unit, and so it does not take up as much space on your plate carrier. So it's sort of a, a waste almost to use up uh, an entire big patch right on the, the top center for just a phone mount. So if we combine the two, we uh, more efficiently use the space that's available. So um, it is actually kind of useful. Uh, as far as thickness, uh, well, if we compare it to, say, like a standard AR mag, it's about, about the same thickness as that um, shotgun mag. Yeah, it's about the same. So it doesn't take up uh, an inordinate amount of space. So the device is going to be somewhat water resistant, if you want it to be. The, the cover has a groove that you can fill with a silicone sealant. And, uh, and there's a, a matching, like a, a ridge on the base here, so that will form a, a seal. The way it attaches is with these silicone straps that um, pass through the, the back. And then internally, there is a, a panel you could put over here um, that's got the same setup. Uh, the panel has a groove that you can fill with silicone, and then it will mate up against a, a ridge that will seal that and prevent water from intruding there. You can uh, silicone these, silicone the barrel jack. I think this is probably going to be the weak link, um, but it should at least survive, you know, rain and stuff like that without issue. Um, as far as the uh, the attachment, again, we'll go back to these. So uh, it's a little tab. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Um, but it's just, you feed this through your molly webbing. And then you pull up. And then it kind of snaps in place there. And it stays put pretty good. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't want to come off accidentally. You got to actually put some force into it. Um, the phone attaches also with some silicone as well. So it's just got these little little straps that kind of go on. Um, so it, it's actually, it holds the phone really well. It's pretty challenging to insert the phone into this, to be honest. 
Um, so if you if you find that you're unable to do that, then um, you know no worries. You just go find yourself a, a strong man and ask for assistance. So the so the latch on the top right there, there's a, a little, little groove. There's a, a bump in the little latching mechanism, and so you just pop it up, and that flips down. Um, it's sometimes <laughs> there's some ridges on here to give you a better grip on it, um, but it kind of interferes with this thing sometimes. Well, okay, it can comply at that time, but sometimes it doesn't want to pop up when you push it. So, um, let's mount this. Whoa. Let's mount this to our plate carrier and see what it looks like. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what these are, um, this plate carrier is dumb, and it only has Velcro. It's a massive, big Velcro patch here, no webbing. So this is a, a Molly to Velcro adapter that I had to use. Um, it's, yeah, it's dumb. I don't like this at all. And here's what it looks like installed. So we've got the two SMA ports for the antennas. You'd run this to your cable. Uh, don't put the antennas straight off of this. It's, it's obviously going to be in the way your arm is is going to strike that. So, so use some cables. I would recommend LMR two hundred. It's a it's a nice, fairly small diameter. It's about the same diameter as a a, a braided USB cable. So it's reasonably flexible, and it's going to be pretty easy to route. It's also rated up to six gigahertz, so you want to make sure that whatever cable you use has got the correct rating for, for six gigahertz because it is a 2.4 and five gigahertz. Um, it's actually 5.8, um, kind of leave that part out, but uh, it's, it's fairly close to six gigahertz capable. So you want to get your cables that are rated for six gigahertz. Um, LMR 200 is LMR 400 also. Um, it's even better than LMR 200, but it's quite a bit thicker, so I think this is the sweet spot here. I've got the power cable. It's a, a screw-down barrel jack and goes to our USB power bank. This is just a regular USB cable, and I chopped it and soldered this barrel jack connector on. And then internally, there's the remaining portion of the USB cable <laughs> just uh, soldered to the the jack, the, the female side of the, the barrel jack, and then that plugs into the the AXT1800 inside. And so that's how we get power to it. And then our cables go to our antennas. You just position those wherever you want on your kit, and you're all set. The uh, EUD mount, it doesn't have a, uh, a stop. There's no like friction adjuster or anything. So. Um, so you just use your shotgun magazine and position that wherever you want your EUD to uh, to stop at. So if you want it, you know, to open a little bit, you have it there. If you want it to open further, you just twist that further out of the way like that. So easily adjustable. And I forgot to say, as far as, uh, let me get this out of the way, as far as where you get the silicone pieces from. So... Those come from Amazon, actually. There's a, a number, there's a whole bunch of them, really. It's from the, you know, the Chinese companies. They just throw an ass load of random letters all together, and then, ta-da, it's a brand new company. Um, yeah, it's one of those situ situations. It's, uh, they, they make these phone chest mounts. It looks um, just about identical to this piece, to be honest. And they have these silicone pieces. They've got the, the little tab thingies for attaching this to the Molly. So that's, that's where those come from. So they cost like $17 or so. It's fairly inexpensive. So you just get one of those, pull the silicone pieces off, and transplant them onto the spam caster. And then, uh, oh, as for the name, I'm sure a lot of people will ask how I got spam caster 1-800. So it's the, uh, of course, it's a play on Streamcaster, naturally. And uh, also it's, it's Wi-Fi, so it's constantly sending out emissions and beacons and broadcasts and whatever. So uh, it, there's a lot of, lot of constant transmission going on. So definitely don't use this in a armed conflict against China, Russia, the United States, 
uh, really any first world country. Better yet, just don't use it in any sort of armed conflict. Um, it's, it's really, that's a bad idea. And uh, so I digress, sorry. Um, so spam caster and then 1-800. So that's because of the AXT-1800 internally that it has. I'm pronouncing it, of course, 1-800 um, because of, you know, spam, spammy commercials and all that. Um, but also it's in the great tradition of mispronunciations with this type of gear. Um, just like how everyone says, man A, um, I am saying 1-800, so... Um, that is how we arrived at that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Feel free to dislike, leave hateful comments, and unsubscribe. And I will see you in the next one.